If you're finishing up a big woodworking project, you might want to cap it off with some lovely decorative moldings. Installing a little bit of trim on a project can make it better in so many ways. It can protect fragile edges, it can hide little gaps, hide end grain. Molding just turns a basic box into a lovely piece of furniture. But as soon as you get into putting moldings on your woodworking projects, you're going to run into problems. You can buy your molding, like for instance I've got this lovely piece of bought crown molding, and this stuff is great, but it's expensive and the shapes that you can get are very limited. Most woodworkers make their own instead. You can do that with an electric router, but these tools are expensive, dirty, and a little bit dangerous, so a lot of people don't want to go in this direction. The other choice, of course, is to use vintage molding planes. But man, you've got to find them, restore them, sharpen them, learn to use them. If you go down this rabbit hole, who knows how long it's going to take you to actually get back to your project. So I've got a different idea. How about instead of getting involved in all these specialized tools, how about I show you how to cut a bunch of lovely decorative profiles with no special tools, just using our standard Woodwork for Humans toolkit. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hold on, Rex. You're telling us we're going to make moldings without any molding tools? What are we going to do? Chew the shapes out with our teeth? Well, let's just say that was the answer. Would that be a deal breaker? The truth is, we can cut a bunch of lovely decorative profiles just using a smoothing plane and a simple shop-made rabbit plane. I know that's hard to believe, so let's get right to it. The simplest and maybe the most useful trim shape is the basic quarter round. And you can cut this shape with hand planes in just a few minutes. I've set a gauge to the thickness of my board, and I'm going to gauge that line along the face. Between my line and the back edge of the board is a 90 degree angle. If I round that over, I'll have a very nice quarter circle profile. I'm beginning with my scrub plane to waste away material quickly especially on that corner where I have to get rid of a lot of stock. The longer you stick with the scrub, the faster the work will go. So keep a close eye on both ends of your board. That's where you can see the profile developing. You're depending on your hand and eye to make a fair curve, but it's not hard if you pay attention. Once you have your curve roughed in, switch to a finely set smoothing plane and refine your shape. I'm focusing on the ridges left by my scrub plane, and I'm also using my hands to tell me how smooth my curve is. Your sense of touch is often better for these things than your eyes. Notice that I'm working right up to my gauge line, but I'm being careful to leave it in. If I plane past that mark, I'm going to mess up the shape. Your smoothing plane is going to leave some facets across the curve, so you'll want to finish off with a little bit of fine grit sandpaper. It only takes a few strokes to leave a really round profile. Once your profile is finished, saw it off your main board, staying outside your gauge line. Then plane the sawn face down to your line, and your molding is complete. This piece is ready to be cut to length and glued onto a project. Once you've got that basic technique down, we can do a variation. This time, we're going to gauge a line about an eighth of an inch away from one edge. Then, just like before, we'll gauge the thickness of the board across the face. Now, we're going to connect those two lines with a 45 degree angle. The scrub handles the bulk of the work. Then we're going back to the smoothing plane to get right down to the lines and get a flat surface to the edge. It's important to keep yourself from planing on autopilot. You have to keep checking against your lines. For instance, I haven't planed enough on the near end, so I need some short strokes close to me to get that section even with the rest of the piece. As I finish, I'm working right down to my lines and taking a pass or two on that narrow top to even everything out. This molding has a crisp, geometric look, and that flat spot on top makes the piece more durable while adding a bit of visual interest. A shape like this looks nice around the base of something, and it won't be too easily damaged. Not impressed yet? That's okay. We can do a lot more just by bringing in our shop-made rabbit plane. I've set this piece up on the far edge of my joiner's bench, where I've got a line of holdfast holds, and my stock is easy to grab. You can build this bench in a couple of days, and I have videos and plans to show you how. My rabbit plane is just a chisel and a few scraps of hardwood, but I can set it for a fine cut, and the built-in fence makes it accurate. This is short stock, so I'm just taking full-length passes with the plane. We'll talk about techniques for longer moldings in a second. I haven't set any lines here, and my plane doesn't have a depth stop, so I'm just going by eye and feel. I want a shallow rabbit that's well-defined and visible from a distance. It doesn't take long. 
Then I flip the board and cut the same rabbit on the other side. Once I've got both rabbits cut, I bring the piece over to my leg vise, where I can easily set it up on edge, and clean up the rabbits with a bit of sandpaper. I fold the paper in half, and that gives me a crisp edge for sanding off any ragged fibers inside those corners. Once I'm happy with my rabbits, I grab my smoothing plane and start taking the corners down and rounding over the edge. Again, I'm working by eye, and you can see a smooth round over taking shape in between my rabbits. Since I'm working by hand, I can control the height of this detail and the shape of the curve. I thought it was going to be tall and narrow, but as I work, I'm making it lower and a bit flatter because it just looks better. You might struggle to get straight and smooth planing strokes as you make your round over, but it's all in the body mechanics. I can plane this board from one end to the other and take full length strokes, but most of the motion isn't in my arms. I'm actually keeping them pretty close to my torso, and I'm rocking my whole body back and forth. You can see how my feet and ankles are pushing my body into the stroke and then back again in a smooth motion. Using the big muscles of your legs and keeping your arms close will give you a straight and consistent stroke. Get your posture down and you'll do more accurate work with less fatigue. You can finish with a little sandpaper to take out the facets left by the plane. And your final profile will be this lovely bull nose with crisp rabbits on either side. This is a pretty fancy detail and it would even make a good picture frame if you wanted to make one from scratch. So we've made some nice moldings and we've done it with the basic tools, but how far can we actually push this approach? Well, what if we started with a basic rabbit, but a little bit narrower and deeper than the ones we've been cutting? Then I'll move the fence about an eighth of an inch and cut another rabbit right next to the first one. That looks nice already, but there's some room left. So let's move the fence again and cut one more. I'm letting the plane lean a little bit which puts a bit of slope on my vertical lines, but you can go straight up and down if you want. You have a lot of control with these techniques. Another folded piece of sandpaper sharpens up my corners and the end result is clean. You could put this almost anywhere on a box or cabinet and give things a slightly modern look. Now, let's do a variation. I'll cut the exact same stair-step rabbits and then come back in with a smoothing plane to round the top one into a gentle slope. Then I can take my rabbit plane tilt it a few degrees and take a few cuts on my lowest corner, which rounds it over too. If I come in with a little sandpaper on the top and bottom corners, I get two round details with a sharp edge between them. It's like my stair-step molding, but with a softer and more traditional look, better for older style furniture. So we've already got five nice molding profiles we can cut with basic tools, but if we throw in our simple homemade grooving plane, we can take things up another notch. I've got my depth stops set for a groove about 3 16ths deep. The plane is going to ride against this batten to set my distance from the edge. I'll set the plane for a heavy cut and start at one end, working my way back. I just keep going until the plane stops cutting. Then I've got a nice sharp groove all along my edge. Then I can use a plane to round over that top corner and turn it into a bead detail. The ends of any hand cut molding might look a little blown out and messy, so always cut more than you need. Then you can saw off the end, shoot or sand the loose fibers, and you'll get a crisp end that looks nice. This is another profile that would go well on the base of something, and the rounded top edge will be durable. So now that's six profiles we can cut with basic tools, but the whole point of this video is to make actual moldings for real pieces of furniture. I've been working on this cabinet for a while now, and it just needs moldings to be finished. We're going to cut a classic profile and fit it to the cabinet. I'm using a very shallow gauge line so that I can run a wide rabbit and get it the same depth along my whole seven foot board. I'm also starting at the far end and taking shorter strokes, working my way back and creeping up on my line. Using a short stroke and working back is the traditional technique for making long moldings. When I have the depth, I'll take a few long strokes to get my rabbit flat. Now I'll use my scrub and my smoothing plane to round the floor of my rabbit into a nice quarter round shape. Combined with the rabbit, it makes a traditional profile called a thumbnail. You see this on a lot of old furniture. Here's how it looks with our other profiles, but I'm doing something a little different. I've cut this profile on the edge of a pretty wide board, and I'm going to use my DIY miter box to cut 45 degree angles, then shoot them perfect with my miter shooting board. Then I can assemble them right over the top corners of my cabinet. I still need to trim my face frame, so the molding isn't lining up perfectly, but it will when I'm done. 
Now I've also got these visible rabbit joints on the ends of the case, but I've made a little slanted molding, and I can pin that up under my thumbnail trim for a finished look. And I'll run that same molding all along the front of the case to finish off the whole piece. For the base of my cabinet, I've made some more of that stair step trim, and I'm going to clamp it upright to the fence of my miter box and cut my 45s. Then I can assemble it around the bottom of the case. It looks crisp, and it's going to protect the cabinet from getting kicked. This is exactly why we put molding on the bottoms of our pieces. So in this video, we cut seven beautiful molding profiles just using basic tools. And we cut six of those profiles using nothing but a smoothing plane and a homemade rabbit plane. And I am totally sure that these are not all the shapes you can get just using relatively basic tools. These are just the ones that I came up with. Learn the techniques in this video and then make up your own profiles. And then when you do, Put them up on Instagram and tag me. I absolutely love to see the things that my viewers get up to in their own woodworking. Now, while you were watching this video, you might have seen my rabbit plane and my grooving plane and thought, oh, those look simple. I would like to make those. And of course you can. It's not very difficult. I have a great bundle of plans for making all the specialty planes that I use in my videos. It's got the rabbit plane and the grooving plane, plus a spoke shave and a router plane and a low angle jack plane, and I threw in a free project. So you get six plans, it costs 10 bucks. You can click the link down in the description or get it at rexkruger.com slash store. And of course, I wanted this project to have a big splashy reveal at the end where all the trim was perfectly installed and surgically mitered and everything just looked majestic and lovely and I am homeschooling a kid in addition to my regular work and I just can't get done as much as I usually can. I bet a lot of you watching are in the exact same position. As a matter of fact, if you're doing a full-time job and homeschooling a kid, go ahead and hit that like button right now. Thumbs up to crush a pandemic. And you know what? I'm still gonna have a big splashy finish to this project because I've decided to make my own paint. I've got three different traditional recipes with easy ingredients and I'm gonna do an entire video where I mix them up, test them, apply them, and then finish off the entire piece. So make sure you stay with me for future videos where I finally, finally finish up this cupboard. And just like usual, I have to thank my patrons on Patreon and my channel members. The people who support this channel are bringing you this content for free. They're also keeping this channel independent and sponsor free. If you would like to be one of the folks that makes this possible, you can click that join button right below the video or go over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the rewards early and check out the rewards early access and exclusive deals that I give just to the people who make this content possible. I'll see you all next week. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching.